Joe Clark here, Product Manager for Invensys Eurotherms Data Recorders, and today we're going to be talking uh, briefly about the Review Light program and really kind of a basic setup and, and how to really get the software working for you. Um, assuming that you've already installed Review, well, I'm going to go ahead and just click on the Start menu. Uh, underneath All Programs, I can go to my Eurotherm folder, and you'll see an icon for Review. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Review, Review Light is a free uh, software uh, package that uh, comes with our data recorders and can also be found on our website uh, packaged with our 6000 series tools. Okay, um, There's a lot of options in review um, and, and we're not going to be covering them today. I'll say that for another little bit more in-depth video, but um, this is going to be a real brief video talking about how to really set up the uh, review software, get the data from the recorder into review, and then ultimately um, looking at the data once we're complete. And I'll also point out a couple of quick uh, little tips and tricks uh, for use. So the first thing that I would do upon opening up review um, is really need to determine how am I going to go about getting the data from the recorder into the database. Now in the event that your recorder is not on network anywhere um, you can do a more of a manual method. The 6000 series and the NanoDeck both have USB ports on them. If you insert a USB stick up to 8 gigabytes in size, you can transfer the internal data over to that USB stick. And by going to Transfer from Removable Media, you can then select that USB stick that you have inserted into your computer and transfer uh, that, those files from the, uh, essentially from the recorder or the NanoDAC. Hitting OK will bring over any file that it finds. And usually, um, depending on how much data, it won't take any more than maybe two to three minutes to complete. Now, if you're doing uh, something over the network, uh, this involves one other st uh, simple step. Underneath the instrument tab, there is an option down here at the very bottom underneath setup called TCP IP. Uh, within this uh, window that you see, this is where you can add all your individual instruments. So in the event that you've got multiple recorders in your facility, you can actually plug them in uh, to this configuration here uh, with their individual IPs and have review go out to all of your recorders and pull all that data into the review. Nice thing about this is you don't have to plug in a USB stick, walk over to your computer, and dump the information. This is all done over Ethernet. It's very simple. It's literally a couple of clicks and you're done. Uh, just talking about this screen, however, um, it's as simple as plugging in the IP address of the recorder. You give it a unique identifier, which I would recommend naming the exact same thing as your recorder. Um, the connect timeout, meaning how long it takes before it can't connect to the recorder, I would leave that at th as three seconds, which is the default. And last at the very bottom here, you've got a, a use passive FTP. And what this use passive FTP does is essentially give you the ability to kind of bypass uh, maybe third party software like the McAfee firewalls. It doesn't hurt to use it, so I'd recommend using it regardless of what your situation is. When you're done setting this up, you can simply click on OK. Once you have that done, the next step would be going to the auto backup and transfer. Now what's nice about the auto backup and transfer is this serves as a two-fold function. First you select what instrument you want to use and when you have that device selected uh, input the username and the password and by default that username is going to be engineer the password is going to be 100. Now if you change the password at a later time that password needs to change as well. In order for this process to work however you do need to click on the enabled underneath the backup window here because again, the way that this works is it looks, or logs onto your recorder or NanoDAC, looks at any files that it doesn't currently have in its uh, master archive full folder, and backs everything up into that directory. And we'll get into a little bit more detail regarding what this master archive folder is. But it is taking that raw data and backing it up. So in the event that something happens to your recorder or NanoDAC, you at least have the raw encrypted data for you to recreate a chart at a later time. What is optional, however, is this Enable tab underneath the Transfer to Database. Now, I'd recommend utilizing this because without having that data in the database, you can't recreate the chart. So if you click on Enable for both Backup and for Transfer, and then hit Transfer Now and Confirm, it's then going to go out to the recorder or the NanoDAC, log on to that unit, and pull everything over into the Master Archive folder, then transfer it into your database. Now when you transfer it into your database, that data now is at your fingertips for recreating charts based on the data you've collected. 
This is a real simple process. If you click on File and then go to New Chart, it pulls up a chart setup window. Now what you see in front of you right now, the only thing that I do want to mes mention is underneath the chart setup there's a Show Messages. You can optionally turn this off if you want, but when you have Show Messages, this shows information pertaining to uh, any batch information you may have, a specific user logging in or out, a configuration change for example, or even some type of system alarm. So I'd recommend leaving it on. And just a reminder, once you create the chart, you can always turn the uh, messages back off at a later point. Now in order for us to recreate this chart, we actually need to add points to it. So if we click on the add points, a window pops up that is, allows you to choose what recorder you want to connect to, followed by what group, and what points we plan on using. Now for this example, I'm going to use the recorder that's called server recorder number two. I want to look at all the thermal couples or all the inputs going into my group one. And for this example, I'm going to select just the first nine thermocouples. This can be done by clicking or holding the control button and selecting individual inputs. This can also be done by holding your shift and going to the last thermocouple. Or if you would simply want to just click on the first input, hold your left mouse button and drag down, you can do that as well. So again, I've got my nine thermocouples I want to use for my uh, chart. And once I'm done, I go ahead and click OK. And you'll notice that in the chart setup window, now we have our nine thermocouples identified and labeled by the name of that particular uh, thermocouple, followed by the group that they are in, as well as the instrument they are coming from. When we're done, we go ahead and hit OK. Now it pulls up a chart window as you see in front of you. Now right now, there doesn't appear to be any data, but if we maximize the window, you'll then see all of our data is towards the top of the chart. Now let me show you a couple of quick things that you're looking at right now. On the right hand side here you've got test TC number one all the way down to nine. On the left hand side you've got a low value, on the right hand side you've got a high value. This is the scale of your recorder, okay? The value that's in the middle going all the way down, that's the current reading of that thermocouple based on the dotted line that you see right here on the chart. As I move that dotted line across my chart, you'll notice a couple things. The values on the right hand side will move as I move the cursor. Additionally, as I move this cursor, the time in the middle will change as well. So this gives you an indication that at a specific date and time, for example at 4.45 in the morning, I was reading t these temperatures on the right hand side. Now granted, I'm looking at one second intervals. If we want to see a bigger picture of what we've collected, let's, let's move out to something more like five seconds. If we move it out to something like 10 seconds, now we can start to see some type of variation in data. If we keep moving out just a little bit more, now it looks like we are doing some type of set point survey possibly. Again, another thing I want to point out though, on the left hand side here and on the right hand side we have some dates and times that's also based on the furthest left and furthest right of the chart. So the chart that we're looking at goes anywhere from um, February 9th at almost 11 o'clock at night all the way until the following day at 5 o'clock in the morning. So that's the basic chart operation that we're looking at. What you see roughly in the middle of the screen, that would be one of the messages that we were talking about. So again, that's optional for you to have that displayed or not. Uh, we chose to leave that on. Now if you are doing batch data, for example, um, one of the benefits of utilizing batch is that it uniquely identifies a specific recording interval, therefore eliminating the fact that you have to search for data. So when you have the chart created, if you go to chart and go to where it says go to, this allows you to search for individual batch data. Now you can search for specific date and times, specific durations. But what we want to focus on, if we click on batch, we have a couple different options here. For this example, clicking on the drop down window underneath batch name will suffice because we only have one batch. Well, let's say for example we have multiple batches, maybe somewhere around 25 to 30 different batches. If we click on the find batch window, they'll all be listed here. And what's a nice feature is that you can actually do a search for a specific batch field. It does not matter which field you're looking at, you can search for anything. Now for this particular example, they only utilized one batch field. 
you can have up to 10 batch fields in our uh, 6000 series recorders. So once I put in what field I want to look for, I do a find first. And obviously, you can see by the uh, light blue color that the first one is selected. When I select that, I click on OK, and that batch is selected. Now that I've got that batch selected, I can go ahead and click on the OK button. It automatically rescales the chart to show you the very start of the batch data followed by the very end of the batch data. Let's go ahead and expand this a little bit more. So on the very far left hand side you can see that we've got a date and a time and a message that says batch start by operator. It looks for a certain period of time the furnace that this was monitoring was running at idle or room temperature and then we started to ramp up to the first set point followed by the second set point followed by the third set point. So simply by uh, looking for a specific batch name now we can re pull this information up and then again we are reviewing this data and this is one of the benefits of using review. Now from here you got a couple of things that you can do um, if you wanted to you can simply go to file and save chart you can give this a unique name or leave it as default by chart one if you click that it will automatically set a chart icon on your desktop so in a later time let's say the following day you close out of your review program you now no longer have to worry about going in uh, into review and having to recreate that chart all you have to do is click on the chart icon hit enter and it recreates that chart for you now the benefit about this however is if you are connected um, over TCP IP communications every time you open up review review will try to connect to that device and backfill the data so although we looks like we have no more data after this time if this was actual up-to-date data every time we open that chart it will backfill the following information after that and it will continually keep it up to date therefore eliminating the fact that you have to recreate that chart it's always there it will always update every time you open up review Another nice feature about this is that you can actually print off these charts um, to save for your own records. This is as simple as going to the file and print menu. And again, you have the ability to print exactly what is in front of you. This may be beneficial if you want to zoom in on a specific uh, set point, for example, and only look at 30 minutes worth of data. Um, another option you have is what we um, currently did is select individual batch names. Uh, meaning that it's going to print off anything of uh, the start and stop and anything in between for that batch. And lastly, you have an option to choose a specific interval. So let's say, for example, we wanted to print everything on February 9th starting at 4 o'clock. And subsequently, we want to run everything from six hours after this point. So by doing this, it's now going to uh, print data starting from 4 p.m and go from 4 p.m. till midnight and will not print anything before or after that period. Clicking on preview will give you an example of what I was talking about. As you see on the far left hand side here everything starts at 4 o'clock and we run until midnight or I should say 2200. Uh, from here you can choose to print however I will just close. Another thing we can do is we do have the ability to actually export this to a CSV file. So this can be handy for those of you who want to actually look at the spreadsheet data of this. By clicking on file and then going to export, if we click batch and the batch that we just looked at and copy a file, we can then copy this to a file on our desktop which we'll name as test. I did not give it an extension, I just gave it a simple file name. And the benefit to doing this is that at a later time, if you have Excel open, you have a WordPad open, or any other kind of um, software open, you can simply drag the file into the um, Excel spreadsheet, and right away it automatically formats it for spreadsheet view. Changing the format with the font size to 8 clearly shows you that we've got our date time on the left hand side, followed by any messages as well as all our thermocouples and the data that pertains to that time and the type thermocouple.
Other than that, that is pretty much the extremely basic usage of review. There is a lot more features within review um, that we can talk about at another time, but this video was designed to provide you with a basic setup of how to really utilize review. My information should be popping up on the screen, so if you ever got any questions down the road or you need help setting up review and my video just didn't quite cover it, feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email at any time. I appreciate you watching. Thanks.